You're listening to Allegedly NYC. Allegedly. Hello and welcome to another episode of Allegedly NYC. I'm Nomi Ruiz. And I'm Eva San Jurjo. And we are just two Puerto Rican girls with a lot of time on our hands. Girl, <laughs> turns out tons of time. <laughs> tons. Are you gagging still? Because I, I still am. <laughs> I, I'll never stop gagging. No, I'm just like, yesterday, you know, we took a little walk and uh, I'm walking. I'm like full of sweat underneath my mask. I'm sweating. It's <laughs> it uncomfortable. Warm. Uncomfortable, like what the fuck? But you know what? Is is what we gotta do. Two Puerto Ricans doing what they have to do. Two Puerto Ricans, <laughs> one city bike. <laughs> one, one city bike. And I've been loving city bike rides. Stuff. Girl, I'm impressed. Girl, I went all the way from Bushwick to Williamsburg to Greenpoint back to downtown Manhattan. I was like, Girl, yes, why didn't wait, I do this before? Be Girl, I can't yeah, wait. I needed be something because my body was getting like, you're gonna just get so the bodies. like, like I've been rest, working out rested? every day. I have to. Yeah, we're too rest. Now we got to like lift because we don't really have sacky titties when all this shit goes, when they start <laughs> opening up the gates again. Like I'm like, right, yeah, no. Shit is like, no, we're going to be like saggy alcoholics. Saggy alcoholics. <laughs> I tried, so I've been drinking, girl, I've been drinking, like, a, to maybe too much wine, so I Aren't thought, all? I thought if I made, like, harder cocktails, that it'll make me drink less. We're learning as we go. <laughs> it didn't really work out. <laughs> but, like I said, it, I didn't drink the whole bottle of tequila. So that's different. See, I drink a whole bottle of wine. Half only. <laughs> The whole bottle of tequila. That would be... You, God, you would be not refreshed today. I tell you that. Girl. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what time I woke up. But anyway. <laughs> anyway, today we have a special co-host joining us. Straight and direct My from favorite. Los Angeles. Miss Hollywood. Jamie darling. A-list Clayton is joining She really joining is. Us. She oh. really is. She's our A-lister. We she's can't so wait to I hear can't. what she's been up to and get her opinion on some current new york tea yeah and oh we have to tell our views, viewers about some some fun things we're doing here at allegedly we're we're doing a patreon oh my god yes we launched our patreon so everyone please go on there support allegedly nyc so we can keep bringing you content yeah, um, get us a cup of coffee get us a cup of coffee or help us pay the rent the rent here for our SoundCloud membership for our Ecamm memberships, you know, support the it. dolls. I could use one of those uh, LDC lighting, whatever the fuck you call them. Yeah, we could get <laughs> ring lights. We'll like invest. I need a ring light. We want to invest in allegedly because we know yeah. you want more content at higher quality and you deserve it. Yeah. And you deserve everything. You deserve it. And we have some fun you guests. You own coming everything. Up. You own <laughs> everything. All right, so yeah, go to um, our Patreon page. We're going to put the link on the, uh, below in this video, and we're going to put the link you know, all over our social media and stuff like that. And don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube and you know, follow us on all our media. Share all us to it. your friends. We love your comments, by the way, and they're good. Keep the comments coming. Especially we had that Amanda show. That was juicy. That was a good one. Um, <laughs> all right well we'll be right back with miss jamie a-list clayton joining us to co-host a s Ho hollywood a l l <laughs> how do you spell allegedly allegedly, allegedly. Hey. you're listening to allegedly nyc allegedly everyone so. get it yeah. Can you hear us now, everyone? Can everyone hear us now? So the Chloe Ting Challenge. So I'm doing it with my friend Rain, and we're currently on day six. Um, so that's been really, really, really fun because I have zero, zero motivation. I am not a self-starter. 
I, I'm on time for work. If I have to be accountable to someone, I'm I'm there. If I'm I'm on time for work, I'm on. I do everything. But if I just have nothing to do, I'll sleep until noon. Yeah, oh, girl. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's um, the same, girl. It's, I need it's, that too. It's hard. It's hard to kick your your own ass to do like all it this. Is. You know, yeah, yeah, it is. It was important for me to buddy up with someone to do this because I. It like, is helpful. We text each other every day, like the little green check mark emoji, like day six check, and like, and it feels good, and like we feel like, oh, we feel mm-hmm. accountable to each other, and like it's it's fun, and I'm already seeing, like I already feel better. Results. I'm sleeping better. It's all this shit about working out that you hear. That it's like, oh, like I've been sleeping better. I've been like, everything's like, I feel better. Right. All the cliches. It's like, they're real. It's annoying. It's true. Because it's, it's like, totally I true. feel like this normally. Oh my God. Yeah. Well, wait, wait. Without, so, quickly tell everyone uh, what you were just talking about because the sound wasn't working. So just say like, the, you were talking about the, the challenge just really quickly. Like, uh, yes. So the challenge. I, I, I got into a little bit just like this schedule that I had come up with for myself while I'm self, um, self-isolating. And it was like a very simple schedule and taking some walks three times a week. And just a week ago, a friend of, a friend of mine and I, we've incorporated um, a Chloe Ting challenge. Chloe Ting is this fitness YouTuber. She's got millions of followers. Like, I, I don't know anything about YouTube. I don't know anything about that world. Um, but I found her one night in, in like, a YouTube K-hole scroll. Mm-hmm. And and she has all these amazing videos. And I love also, like, me personally, I don't want a man telling me how to work out. I want a, like, I like a woman telling, yeah. like, another yeah. woman, this is what you can do to snatch your body to have, like, yeah, you know. Yeah, because I don't want to be built. I just want to look lean and, like, not, not even, lean, but like, uh, you know, shake like, my body. I mean, I just don't like men telling me what to do. It's, it's in general. general. So if any of you guys, two and general. three, yeah. <laughs> anyone out Unless there trying to kick it for Jamie, don't I'm, try. Yeah. Yeah. Unless it's a director. If I'm getting a check, yeah. Unless it's Checks a director. No I love that. Okay, that's a Jamie Clayton quote. I don't like a man telling me what to do unless you're a director. Is that, is that, my, <laughs> is that my housewife's thing? Like, <laughs> no. <laughs> Wait, I'm going to give you some applause for that. Like, that's my director. <laughs> oh my All right, everyone, before we get to started further i want to just say everyone if you all anyone has questions for jamie or for us leave them down in the comments and afterwards we'll check them and see which ones are appropriate to bring up um but okay jamie so how is this affecting like your industry like is this what's going on tell give me the behind the scenes of like hollywood so uh, yeah. yeah, okay. I'll tell you what what I know what about you know. Hollywood so far is this. Um, I've had a couple of um, of auditions because self tapes have been around for forever. Right. Um, and and now helping... with all that can be done. Exactly. So production companies are pretty much shut down to maybe like a quarter of their capacity. I know that casting is still happening, um, and you know, like writers rooms are open because the writers can do this and they can right. keep writing. And maybe they um, write better. It, it's it's nice because you know people don't have to travel they don't have to go into the office i mean i'm not a i'm not a writer i don't know i mean i know for me it's nice i prefer doing self tape auditions because yeah. i can get the take that i want and yeah, then exactly. send that one in so you know what and you delivered as opposed to like in live you're like fuck what just happened i don't know it, and you know sometimes you go in and if it's moving really fast like i had a, an audition for a pilot for a comedy pilot and I went and I got one take on on each of three scenes it was one 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 that was it because we're like it was like names only they were seeing people it was fast they were casting like nine different roles and with it with a self tape I get to send in the one that I like and really massage it and finesse it so I know casting is open and writers rooms are open um and I know in Los Angeles we have shelter at home orders until May 15th I'm assuming that that's going to change until at least June 1st or June 15th. And then as far as going back to work, I don't know what that's going to look like. I've seen some chatter on Twitter um, from writers and showrunners. Um, Karina Adley McKenzie is one, what she was talking about it. She's the creator and the showrunner, the writer on um, Roswell, New Mexico. And she was talking about like, what does this look like when we go back to work? I know for me personally, um, I'm not shaking anybody's hand ever again. <laughs> um, right, it's like there's no more for me like kissing, you know, like 
kissing people, shaking hat, none of it. And Air kisses. I, and I personally, like, I want all the makeup artists, hairstylists, costumers. I want everybody wearing masks, you know, like, all the time. Um, I Right, so it's, it's going to go into, like, your writer, probably. Like, this is going to be in the I'm, writer. Like, this is I'm, how I would I'm, like to work. This is how I feel I'm comfortable. I'm hoping that the production will, the productions will do it, uh, will take their own, you know, do it of their own volition and not have to have right. the actor push you know for these safe environments because of course while i'm filming i can't be wearing a mask but it, it ha would help if everybody, everybody you know right but how do you shoot like a sex scene or yeah. how like now it's just like you can't even kiss someone on camera or now everything's gonna be like how i mean it's or it's gonna be like a porn a porno where they're like you know everyone has to get tested <laughs> and then like in order to work together you all have to know your your status and then you can honest, work on a set i feel together. like that should be the case I there, feel like that should be the case. Well, like I, porn, I, like porn is the most healthy industry. Actually, there was an article that came out about um, it was something about you know like these like pass it, like the idea of like a passport and like once you've been right. tested immunity or like or if you had it they th they think you're immune but that's not fully that, sure. No, about the, CDC, that. the CDC just said that just because you have had it, there is absolutely no proof that once you've yeah. had it. The, and you've recovered that you will not get it again. Right, exactly. exactly. There's no proof of that. The C, you know, and I, yeah. But there, I saw some, you know, an, an article talking about, you know, getting like it, like a bracelet or like a stamp or like, you know, something that says like, oh, I had it. But it's like, that seems really weird. It's like, oh, like I can't go to the grocery store unless I have this like, st it seems really weird. It's right. Getting, it's no. going to get a little complicated. Girl. It's going to get a little complicated. I like that. It's going to get yeah. oddly elitist or something well i mean we're gonna get I into this whole other have thing i have i have some things to bring up for you ladies you know right. I, you know i have lots of tea always with me uh oh, but i first wanted since you're an, an, an la girl have you realized that like there there have been reports coming from la that people are still like going to the beaches and just like hanging out and like at venice beach like nothing's happening like no mass just like gathering like, there's is, no, that, is this there's true no, I, I haven't seen any social distancing is there yeah. truth to this in it's la i know personally like i where i am um like in central los angeles it's the everybody is like doing it and at you know at the at the market they've got you know tape on the ground they've got people lining up they're only letting a certain yeah. number of people into the market at a yeah, time the market, they the put city. the plastic partitions at the registers it's very brooklyn late 90s yeah. new york like oh, it's, yes it's, it's so none of it none of it you know it seems outrageous to me but yes i mean i was i'm i'm from san diego and i saw um on twitter yesterday i was so embarrassing that in san diego like there was this huge pro it's just all these like the protesters white people it's selfish white people they're not pro i can't even call them protesters because protesters are supposed to be protesting you right know, right and environment this is not something that we protest i love that like don't call them protests they're not protests no, they're not they don't deserve that and it was they're garbage sad. dumps <laughs> where i'm from and it was embarrassing and it's embarrassing like to be white because it's all of these white people no, it's don't i don't get it it's really not that big of a deal like you like i understand like people people are just acting really selfish like that's my opinion yeah, that's so yeah, yeah. well I, it's is, another it's, it's another one of those times when like you and know, like and also i'm sorry yeah like when trump got elected it was one of these moments where the veil was revealed like the, there was like the you know the veil was removed and now we're having another moment where we're like seeing even deeper the veils removed again and we're like oh my yeah. god it's even more like we're seeing the roots of the problem now like there's but there's just but there's but there's obsessed there is like this blissful ignorance happening you know it's like it's like you know this is wrong but you're like mm -mm. it's like a stubborn old lady like everyone's like a stubborn oh. 80 old person yeah. and you're like wait you know this is wrong but you just want to be spiteful because you just this is your belief this is who you idolize right now and god damn it if he tells you to drink fucking clorox you're gonna do it strangely, and then now we're, you know, now we got more. Like, I mean, less people to it's vote for him. But <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, exactly. Yes, and it's a lack of empathy. Yeah, hundred percent. Because you don't give a fuck about you don't. Honestly, you don't even give a fuck about your neighbor. You don't give a fuck it's about that, your neighbor yeah. either. No, it's yeah. That. Well, in New York, shit's going down. I definitely yeah. have a teapot ready for us. Are y'all ladies ready for some tea time? Yes. 
And I just want to say, like, my heart breaks for New York. I lived there for 17 years. A part of my heart will always be in New York. And seeing my friends, my loved ones, the two of you, the anxiety, the stress. I have friends who are there. The only people that I know who are sick are there. It's I'm, My heart goes out to New York. New York, I fucking love you. You raised me. You made me the woman that I am. I, I love you, New York. We're here. Thanks, We're girl. doing it. You know, today I was realizing, I'm like, you know, I want to be in New York. Like, I could have been in Mexico. I could have been somewhere else. I, like, something was, like, just stay here. You know, like, I just want to be here to, like, be, kind of just be a part of the culture as well. Of, of, like, what's happening in New York right now. Like, because I feel like it's, when it turns around, it's going to, like, contribute to the culture. So I want to be a part of that as, like, a New Yorker, like. That's why my heart is here, and that's why I'm like here still, and I'm I like I I want to go through this together with my New Yorkers, so I can still be like, this is part of my DNA. You know what I mean? Like it's it's so I'm yeah. I'm I'm just thinking of it in that way. Like born and raised. Yeah, like it's, you know, and New York is the only place that I've ever been, and I've been a lot of places that has such a sense of community. Mm-hmm. I was there. For a lot. I was there for 9-11. I was there for Sandy. I was there for Irene. I was there through Sandy. several major Girl. blackouts. Enough. <laughs> New-, New York comes together in a way that no other city comes together. Yeah. You're so right. You're so right. Well, I have some tea. Here's the tea. It's about the subway system. Girls. Oh, here, Girl. So, you know, the subways is which right now are only being used by essential workers. As well as, you know, it's also started to become sort of a homeless shelter. And yeah, um, that's interesting. Yeah. And the conductors are now saying that it's uh, impossible to practice social distancing on the trains. Because, and videos have surfaced of like the subway cars being lined with people passed out fully on every every seat corner using their shoes as pillows not wearing masks and with piles of trash piles, you know the way they that's always on the new york subways but now it's just like more Extreme. because they're all because it's you know they're all like going there as housing and also there are less cards running so yeah. they each car is more concentrated so it's becoming a little more of an extreme and one conductor said there is an uh, astronomical amount of homeless people now on the subway the metropolitan transportation authority is now the metropolitan transmission authority they are transporting this virus fuck Aww. there's a lot of mta people that are, are passing yeah a lot i don't of know MTA there's like a lot of mta people are have passed um, I did see a lot of, what, what, you know, it took a while for, like I was, I, I spoke about last, I think last week, it took a while for my, the company I work for to finally shut the doors. So it was like me, essential workers and like basically, uh, drug addicts and, and uh, homeless people. And it was, yeah. you know, everyone was using openly, to be honest. I, 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 I was like me going to the sick train in the nineties. So it was like, you know, just. They're like, this is our moment. Like, we have a a space. And, like, like, you know. Ava, why was your job open? So you design. Why wouldn't they? Yeah, I I don't save lives. I don't save lives. Why wouldn't they let you just do that from home? Well, I also, I work for Trump supporters, and they only listen to him. So they didn't listen to, uh, they didn't listen to anybody. They, that, that was their news. So, yeah, so therefore it took them a while to finally, like, shut it down. Also, they lost, yeah, it took forever for them to do that because their source of news is Fox and Trump. So it took them, it took a while. But you're okay and you've been masked up and... Oh, I got sick. Ava was sick, yeah. Oh, yeah, I got, I got, I totally got sick. Yeah, yeah, totally got sick. She made it through, she made it through, she made made a full recovery. Yes, I'm okay right now. It's it's to be... Yeah. <laughs> Did you hear that? Hello. Say it Wait, again. Jen, Jen. Wait, Jen. Say it again for the estrogen. You estrogen. heard about this? No, what? tell us. More more men are dying from the disease than yeah. women. And just now think that it's because of estrogen. <laughs> we finally won, girls. <laughs> finally, something's for our advantage. Google it. Google it Go right on. now. Everyone's becoming fem queens. I just saw it on Twitter. I saw on Twitter they called it like like the the, the transiting. Like 
<laughs> I mean, it's crazy though. But what was weird to me is that at first there was this rumor going around that like black people can't get it, like uh, eh, eh, they're immune. And I'm like, that sounds weird. And then suddenly, boom, it's the opposite. It's like yeah, fifty yeah. to seventy so, like, percent of people are more people of color, and that's because it's also concentrated in like more dense cities. I just saw an article today. I was like. More, more dense cities are like definitely it's about density you know so like of course people who are in low income places we're all where they have to like more people are living in apartments and, and yeah, yeah 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 angeles they've been able to keep you know we we sheltered in place a week before oakland did it a week before we did they were oakland oh, was like wow. the San Francisco was just like uh-uh and right, they, right, right. they shut down and then we're, we did we're, We've got so much space here. Yeah, California is like, that's, well, that's the one thing that's like the difference where, where I've always seen this, even just culturally, where it's like, oh, everything's so wide spread, you know, like when you yeah. like, I'm going to go see my friend, it looks like 20 minutes away. And then it's like, you take this long car ride. So now that's like, that's an advantage. Like, it's an advantage. I mean, like I, um, you know, that I just recently like learned to drive and got my yeah. driver's license. Very and cool. I actually like I haven't talked about this like publicly um yet, but yeah, I got my my driver. I learned to I took so many driving lessons last year during the summer, and then my driver's test was in November, and I went and I passed the first time that I took it and got my license, and I actually bought a car. <gasps> what? Oh my god! Wait, we're giving you oh. some applause, applause, applause. Congratulations! Wow. Wait, I need a photo. What color? Tell me everything. I well, I want surprise you because i was gonna come to your show in fresno but then the whole thing got canceled and i was like i have Girl. to find like a fun moment to to tell her but i got a car on march 11th like oh, literally like started to go down. five days before this shit went down and so i've been able to drive myself to the supermarket and i mean like i am it's a couple of my friends have joked with me like they're like just the universe fucking loves you and i was yeah. like it, yeah it like, girl but even you know even if i didn't have the car like i mean i wouldn't there's no way i would get into an uber or a lyft but i've got a trader joe's you know and i've got i could walk in the but this oh, way no, wait, you, know, I mean, you, you can go girl if i had a car right now i'd be going on a long girl. gorgeous drive through some woods through uh, some shit you know I, what i mean like girl, are you wood. doing that I, oh, God, girl, I'm, about to go, like, I'm about to go to la and be quarantined for a week spray myself and then go meet you and then come stay with <laughs> yeah, <Sandra>. exactly <laughs> Stay in a hotel for 14 days. Yeah, I was the hotel for 14 days. <laughs> um, the, the first couple of weeks that, that this went down, I was going for really long drives because there's no traffic. I was trying, like, getting more comfortable with just with my vehicle because I learned, obviously, like, on a different, and I cars are different. It's like wearing different shoes. Like, they yeah. all feel a little different. Like, you know, your tabbies feel different, you know, than your, your Mew Mew pumps, you know, then feel different than a Louboutin. You got to work them in. You got to work them in. You got to work them in. You gotta work. So I was like, let me get used to my car. Um, I got a Mini Cooper. Oh, and, aren't you adorable? I love it so much. She's like black on black I'm on black on black. I'm dying. Like, oh, like Marilyn. Marilyn all, all, had an all black interior. Wait gonna fucking live girl we're gonna go to palm springs we're gonna we're gonna do it all girl as soon as this shit gets lifted as soon as we can do a flight i will definitely Done. go uh, but i was too. taking long drives but then i saw on the news it was like you know like you stay off the road yeah, yeah, like right. stay home and my and i felt you know i I said this to my therapist the other day. It's so funny because I, I say everything to you. Like I don't say anything in, in, in interviews ever, but I say everything to you. I keep it this that is way. cheesy, <laughs> super cheesy. I said this to my therapist. I'm like, I, I really think that it's so funny to me to say this out loud. I really do think that a big reason why I have the life that I have and the success that I have and the happiness that I have is because I follow the rules. Like, it's kind of dorky and kind of nerdy, but, like, no, the news said don't go for drives, so I stopped. Like, yeah, I, right. I, like, I follow the rules. Like, I just, you know, like, you can't go in stores without a mask on, so I bought masks. Like, you know, you are not, like, even when my friend and I are going on our walks, we walk six feet apart from each other, and then we get coffees, and then we sit in a park, six feet away from each other and talk and if we have to show each other something on our phones we text it to each other very clueless 
I follow the rules. Yeah. Yeah. It's strange. It's a strange. It's a strange time, and like I, it, it, I wish the universe worked a little harder. Where like, if you don't follow the rules, like there are more punishments. Because <laughs> like, people are dying. Like, uh, karma is very real. Karma is real. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I think. I think it's, it's just about responsibility. I, I, I would hate to, you know. Thank goodness, you know, I I was bad written and the whole shit. I wasn't going to go be like, yeah, you know, I feel a little okay. I'm going to step outside. And then I have the conscience of fucking killing five people just because I wanted to get fucking Oprah. Right. No one's thinking you that know? way, like, though, because I'm the not going to do that. Yeah. I'm going to stay I've in, you know? This before, like, I don't want to make you talk about it if you've already. Oh, no, it's fine. No, it's fine. So do you know, like, how or when or where? Or were you just like, all... no, you don't know? And no. How, how I mean, long? Ago it was like the, the train for sure because it would happen. I'm sure it's from the. It train. happened right after you were working, finished right working your job. Me. You were just like. It was like boom. one day to the next. Yeah. I started feeling this heaviness in my chest, you know, and everyone's like, "Oh, maybe it's anxiety," you know, and I'm like, "No, I have anxiety. Anxiety doesn't have like phlegm and doesn't, you know, it doesn't feel like someone's right. sitting on my chest, you know." Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, so "No, wait, it's not anxiety." I- when was it? Um, it was, I, I think, uh, it was the, f- uh, let's see, mid, uh, March 8th, 17th, 18th, I started feeling Oh, like, shitty. like because yeah. that, we, we shut, you guys weren't shut down yet. No. Which is weird. Like, why wasn't, her. me? why was LA oh. shut down before New York? Like, New York is the most dense, the most like insane. You, the center of the universe, allegedly, like the you know, all European. Oh yeah, the second that San Francisco and Oakland shut down, you guys should have been shut down already. Yeah, like you I really- mean, come on, with we're, we're we're so on top of each other here. This is we have a subway system that is the most intricate subway system that's packed. I mean, it's packed to the point where like people wow. friends have visited I me. I bring them on the subway, and they're like. They they get panic Gagging. attacks when they've never had panic yeah. attacks before because just because they're on this New York subway system and it's like that's a whole other thing. Oh, oh my god! Well, I have a teapot. Another teapot has come oh. in. Wait, what? You have a question? What was that? Ava, how long were you sick? Um, I would safely say probably three weeks. Oh my god! And I I am better now, but I still I think th- I still have um. Uh, my breathing is still a little trying to get back right. together. The breathing part, but I, I know well, that I you know that does like, a little bit of like permanent damage. Like you like now you yeah, need to, my to check it out. Is totally different. But you can't yeah, even go breathing, to the doctor to check it out. Yeah. I can't go to the doctor yet, and and even it, it was the breathing, and then I would I would uh, be sweating one second, and I'd be freezing the next. But yeah, that's stopped was, now. Yeah, that's stopped. No, I'm totally stopped now. But like. I'm my uh you're okay yeah it was Girl. it was scary it was scary I, i'll tell you the truth i was freaked out and then the fact that i couldn't get tested or and they told me to go to emergency room because i they know i had it and i'm like but they told you not to go to emergency see i'm doing the good girl thing like you i'm listening to the news too they said not to go uh, to the emergency no. Because then you're yeah. putting, off, you know, know me and all my latins in my life yeah exactly you're like you're gonna like it's a domino effect I just drank, you know, I did a lot of like, you know, uh, he- like at home healing. Like Nomi gave me recipe. My sister gave me recipes for like tea. So like open up my chest. I had, um, uh, what else? I had, uh, the breathing uh, exercises, yeah. the, like, breathing the exercises. Breathing exercises. I was taking, I was taking music too to open up my chest. The whole thing. I sent you, sl- I sent you sleeping pills. <laughs> Nomi sent me sleeping pills because I couldn't sleep. Couldn't sleep. It was a mess. It was, I was a little baby mess, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. she's better now, and that's all we need to I'm better. on. Yeah. I'm and better. we have I'm another better. teapot better. here, ladies. We can't ignore the tea. Hello. We're on Allegedly Hello. Live. Hello. Don't forget. Hello. We're like Kiki, like we're like in real life. But we're, yeah. we're on live. Like <laughs> thousands of people are seeing us right now. Girls, give me some Hi, trash. What do you got? Hey, uh, so Apple and Google have teamed up. To create technology that will track people who have had the virus and will also let others know if they have been in close contact with infected individuals. 
Oh, this is the herd immunity? This is, uh, well, it works with Bluetooth technology, and it, it, your, it lets your phone log other people's phones that are nearby. Like, it's, it's, um... Let's see. It's it it, it seems it, a little invasive. Yeah, I that's the thing. It's been like a it's been like an invasive. That's that's the thing that everyone's been talking like. about. Okay, it sounds invasive, but you know it periodically sends blasts from your it sends pieces of code from your phone to other phones, and all the other phones are just like sending codes out. You know, and it has no tracking. No, it's not. It's not tracking your location. It's just sending code. Like okay. Just seeing, like, much. I mean, it sounds like, like Happen. You know that app Happen? Remember when there was that app, hap, like, the dating app Happen when you, like, cross paths oh, with someone? Yeah. It was like, okay then, you know, because yeah, it was like I you cross it. paths with yeah. someone it, at... Because it was um, dick on the other end. Yeah. And there was... <laughs> I'm like, oh, dick, oh. Well, know? maybe they, you know, they should, maybe we should send them a note. But, like, if you add dick on the other end, maybe more people will participate. Or if you have Corona, Corona, yeah. that means we could fuck, right? <laughs> we could, we could what? We could fuck. Oh, uh, they should add a dating aspect. Oh my god, they should add a dating aspect. Well, that could be a good way to track too. That's well, anyway, so the system when a person is diagnosed with COVID, they can choose to submit their ID code to a database. And that database is controlled by the healthcare industry. And then they send the bleep out and anyone that has the app then can check their database and, uh, and it runs a scan to see if any other codes have been in contact. And then if there's a match, they send the alert out to all the phones that have been in contact with the person during the same time when they, conv- when they contracted it. Not in general, but when, when they contracted it uh, and based on the location... It's not the look. They're not going to track the location, but they're just checking if your phone crossed this phone during the top period that this person was infected, and then they send a notification to that person and say you should like quarantine, so that you know people can help to get this away. It's an interesting concept because, you know, as a as a woman of trans experience, you know, I know all too well disclosure and how hard disclosure can be. And so I know there, there's a, I think that there's a big thing with this too, which is, um, there's a lot of shame around like, which is, I'm so happy that, you know, that you were able to talk about having it and like answer some of the questions that I had. I think that we need to get rid of shame around like a diagnosis and it, you know, it's like with STDs and you know, with, with this, we need to get rid of shame. And so I, I, I kind of, I kind of like it in a sense, in a way. Well, it's, it's not going to ID. It's not going to like be like this person has it. It's just like, it's just like a system. You having to disclose to people that you've been in contact with when right. you were diagnosed. No, but it's not, it's not the, the thing, the thing that they're working on, working on is, is it's not going to like point to a person. It's not going to point to a location. It's just to point, it's just for like the, the, the technology to bleep and track. It's, it's to work, it's to work to really like, uh, dismantle the virus, like a, you know? I, it's like what they do with like, uh, predators. You're going to be like a little dot. No, no, no. Let's not compare it to that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, because they don't know. <laughs> Bad comparison, girl. No. I, I don't know. I mean, let's take a Well, vote. no, and, and it's also, listen, I'll, listen. I'll download it. No, but listen, it's also not, it's a temporary technology, which means that once the virus is contained, it, this whole technology is deleted. It's not like an, an app that exists forever. It's something okay. that's just for right now to contain the virus. And it's Apple and Google doing this together to help contain the virus. And I think allegedly it's worked in other countries where they just can help to like see where it is and help people know how they can contribute to helping the crisis, you know? I, 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 would, I would download it. I would download it. But you know, it's okay. it, it, and it's also not an app that you can download. It would be a yeah. part of healthcare apps. Like it's it'll be like the healthcare providers. You know, if you're if you have your insurance, 
Oh, like with he, like Hilo or Clara. Yeah, like all, all, any health in sh- health care provider app. It would be like the system behind the healthcare app. So then they I would like they would be a part of it, and they would administer how the technology goes. And it's not it's not you signing up and being like, oh my god, link to my Facebook, and like you know, here's my <laughs> fucking profile photo. It's not that. It's just it's right. like literally you're just like telling your healthcare provider like, okay, I'm down to help lessen this pandemic like you can use I, my I, my positive like diagnosis to help the cause i like it right. let's, let's right. get rid of this let's get rid of the shame yeah let's get rid of the like shame it. and let's get rid of it okay i'm gonna teapot ladies you ready sound effect. where are the sound effects the sound effects i can only hear them now i'm sorry they're, you're gonna hear okay. them on the YouTube. You're gonna have to watch the YouTube. Oh, I get it. Oh, okay, 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 okay. okay. I'm in control now. <laughs> so, you're the captain of the ship. What do you got? Mayor Becky Ames of the Southern Texas city of Beaumont Fucking was ca- Becky. Girl, <laughs> Becky was caught visiting a closed nail salon, getting her nails did. And the photo sparked tons of public backlash, as well as an investigation by the district attorney. So, allegedly, she went to the salon after talking with the owner about how to remove an old manicure set. Which I appreciate if she was like, you know, maybe Becky, she's older, she's the mayor, I don't know, she knows, maybe she got acrylics one day, and she was like, okay, I need to take this out, and like, now I can't go anywhere, so she called the girl lady up. And she said, you need acetone to take that shit off, girl. And so the owner said, you know what, girl, my salon's closed, but I'm gonna leave a bowl of acetone for you to go and soak by yourself and get that shit off. So, she left the bowl inside the salon, allegedly, and Ames said she was only there for 10 minutes and she did not get her nails redone. She just wanted to remove the gel or critics, whatever. And the owner also said that if you look at the surveillance videos, it would say it would match with this, with her story. Interesting. Interesting. And so there was Listen, a huge backlash. You do that shit at home, by the way. Well, because they caught a photo. I'm 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 sorry though. Like this is 101 nail care. Like it's so basic, and I don't. I'm no, sorry. but you're like, a pro. You're a nail pro. Be, d- but just this is selfish. This is selfish. Like you're also going to the salon and like who right. knows? Like coughing, sneezing all over. It's like, but also like, why do you get to go to the salon to 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 dip right, your towel exactly. into acetone? The CVS has acetone, girl. I have. Yeah, I, and on top of that, I, I, cause I do the same shit that she does. Here's a girl, trick, same. cause I looked it up, cause I was a hot mess myself. You fucking take, you take little papers. Here's girls, if you're listening or anybody, uh, you take you you take paper, you dip it in the the nail polish remover, you wrap it around your finger, paper? then you take, uh, yeah, you, uh, like tissue or whatever, what cotton, whatever. And you really put soak it really good. Tin foil. Wrap. You put tin foil. On. That's how that uh, shit comes off. Done. Hello, Mayor of it's Texas don't, City. Don't. Okay. I don't like that. I don't like that. It's privilege. So she's canceled. Selfish. She's canceled. She's canceled. Well, she issued an apology statement. She said, in a lapse of judgment, you know, it was a lapse of judgment. I promise there was no malice intended. I should have never entered the salon. I did not intend to take personal blah, privilege. Blah, blah. Well, I... it's, it's, it's privilege and it's selfish. It's it is. Everybody it's else has to stay home. Like, fucking stay right. home. And out of all fucking states where they're, like, uh, you know, going off in the streets with their guns and their bullshit, you're going to do that shit in Texas where you're, like, you're holding on to uh, 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 for your life so for people to fucking listen and mm-hmm. you go out. Yeah. You dumb bitch. Well, let's move Sorry. over to Portland, Oregon, where a venue called... I've always wanted to go. Me too. Now I want to go more because there's a venue that's now called the Lucky Devil Lounge, which was formerly known as Boober Eats. What? Oh, is that a city bar? 
Boober Eats, they were, you know, they used to, it's a food delivery service in Portland, Oregon called Boober Eats. They changed their name to Lucky okay. Devil Lounge. They used to be Boober Eats, which was like uh, sexy, like dancers and strippers would deliver the food to your door. Oh my God, like oh, Uber's fun. delivery. Yeah, like Uber Eats, but it's Boober Eats. Boober Eats. Yeah. Oh, that's all right. I'm I'm down. I'm down okay, with that. Ahead. I'm down with that. Yeah. Are they are they? they I might be working there, and like if I don't Girl, get a job by well, God. June. <laughs> I said the same thing when I fin- when I read this story. They have since expanded their business into a drive-through strip club. Girl, got so smart. So, uh, you know what? Thinking. So, wait, so thinking. what? Like, the, the girl gets up on your hood? Girl. So, customers yeah, arrive. Like, they are. Like, White Snake? <laughs> <laughs> they should add, like, a video aspect where they can, like, they can, like, make a music video out of your moment. So, customers arrive in their vehicles and they're greeted by four dancers in short shorts okay. and pasties. And, you know, they're. And masks, and they're performing in in under. It's like an outdoor well, tent. Okay. So you drive through this tent. It's like a it's like a uh, a tent. <laughs> and they're like people love titties so much they will go out of their way to see a titty. Girl, shit. first the girl hands you a menu with a mask and pasties. Okay. Then you go in the drive through and you you make your order. Then as you're waiting for your order, you have the four strippers in the tent like. Giving a show, giving you titties, everything, everything, everything. And then another girl comes and she's like, hey, here's your food. And you bounce. Girl. Girl. Then go my stimulus check. I'll be fucking there every week. <laughs> <laughs> so just, like I'm it. just going to give you my stimulus check. Fuck it. Well, it, you know, it, co- <laughs> you, it costs the drive through is 30 per $30 per car plus $10 for each additional vehicle occupant. Oh, cute. Perfect. Yeah, bucks, Perfect. And it would be 30, 40, 50 bucks. Yeah, exactly. That's not bad. And you That's also have bad. to order food. So you leave with food. So you leave, you have to add the food on top. And also, have you a get. Beyond burger. What was that? Do they have a Beyond Burger? <laughs> you know what? I bet they do. I'll send them in a Portland, message. I bet you $5 they do in Portland. I'm I think a it's very, like, earthy and greeny over are there. They I bet the wings are good. I bet the wings are good. <laughs> Well, also, on top of that, they give you a free roll of toilet paper. What else do you want in life? What else I do you mean, want? If they gave me, if they gave me the life, the 409 on top of it, I would be <laughs> sold. <laughs> oh, my God, ladies. Okay, well, let's move into another area of tea. That was good. I like that, that one. Was good. That was well, good, right? Well, okay. Vogue veteran Andre Leontale Ooh. recently released his memoir titled The Chiffon Trenches. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and in it, he drags Anna Wintour, honey, drags her. He says Wintour has stopped talking to him. Preferring the company of A-listers such as George and Amal Clooney, Serena Williams, Roger Fed, Fred, Federer. In the book, I don't know how to pronounce that. Jamie, how do you Fed- pronounce? Well, how is it? Federer. Federer, yes, that one. In it, he says, she yeah. is immune to anyone other than the powerful and famous people who populate the pages of Vogue. Ooh, this is good. Girl, Tally had a job interviewing on the red carpet of Wintour's Met Gala, but was replaced by a 22-year-old YouTuber named Liza Kashi. Do we know her? No relation. Tally says, this was clearly a stone-cold business decision. I had suddenly become too old, too overweight, too uncool. I imagined for Anna Wintour. After decades of loyalty and friendship, Anna should have had the decency and kindness to call me or send an email saying, Andre, I think we have a wonderful run with your interviews, but we are going to try something new. I understand nothing lasts forever. Simple human kindness. No, she is not capable. I wonder when she goes home alone at night, is she miserable? Does she feel alone? 
Oh. Oh my. Wow. First of all, her feeling. I have to. I, you, you and I, I have a lot of feelings myself. Andre, Andre Leon Talley is iconic. Like you, I wait to hear what he has to say. I don't give a fuck about any influencer because the 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 history of fashion that comes out of his mouth is I want to hear it, and especially if you're doing the Met Gala red carpets or anything that has to do with fashion, I want to hear it from his mouth. I don't want to hear it from a a a, a, a influencer that uh uh. Their vintage is, is contempo casuals. You know, like, I don't, like, I'm, then I, maybe they even might be, they don't even know what contempo casuals Whoa. is, which is even worse. Oh. But, like, um, <laughs> yeah, hello. God, me, come on. Bang, bang. Anyway, um, I, I just think it's, I think, bad choice because he is someone that we still listen to. I don't know if, Jamie, did you see his documentary? I did. Uh, it, it was beautiful. And the, 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 life. Yes, yes. It's such a beautiful documentary, and you, I had so much even more respect for, re, respect for him after that. Like, to to take someone out of, uh, someone as iconic as him out of the spectrum is insane to me. That's my piece, Jamie, because I know you have something to say. Yeah, it, it, it's interesting because I agree with you in the sense that if you're going to have somebody doing the red carpet at the Met Gala, they have to know their their history and the themes. Yes. You know, um, Bill Cunningham, the you know amazing photographer for the South. Amazing. Section, I miss Bill him. Cunningham miss him. Was, was known so much, I mean, obviously for his amazing photography, but for his knowledge, because he'd been in the industry for so long, he could break down a collection from any designer and say like, and know exactly what they were referencing, whether it was an, an, another designer's collection, right? you know, or a fee or You want or the history, a yeah. There, there's, I think that, that there's a huge lack of knowledge of fashion history with a lot of, um, you know, these, these new young people. It, it's why I have a really great appreciation for, um, there's an Instagram account called Diet Parada. And Love. I really, yes. Calling out bitches. Love that fucking feed. That, that, Love. Because not only do they Homework. call brands for ripping off other brands, but they know their history. Yeah. And, and there's there's something you know I'm I'm a bit of a snob when it comes to clothes. I like clothes. I was, you know, I was raised by a mother who had an appreciation, you know, for the greats, um, you know, for Yves Saint Laurent and, and Oscar de la Renta and Bill Blass and you know oh, and Blass. I I mean yeah you know and there's a lot of people who won't even know who Bill Blass is you know or or, or Lulu Jeffrey Bean. Bean. No one knows who Jeffrey Bean is for Christ's sake. Jeffrey Bean. I've got some Jeffrey Bean in my closet. Shut it right now. I mean, it's there's there. I I don't know. I think that if you're gonna if you're gonna talk about clothes, if you you know if you don't know, I mean, you know, if if, if you only know like Ricardo Tishi, like as a designer of Burberry, racist like, by the way, racist. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's a whole other story. But it's like yeah. with, with with Givenchy. I mean, so many people are running around these kids wearing wearing Givenchy, and they don't even know. That, that he was an actual person, Hubert de Givenchy, yeah. and right. with Balenciaga, Cristobal Balenciaga. I mean, I, I, I no I, one I, even knows the history of 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 of, of Margiela for motherfucking Christ's yeah. sakes. Yeah. I mean, so, well, like the new started. generation, I don't think they know they detach the, the designer from the brand name. I think they think that they are the oh, brand no. name, and it's like something that's like un like not talked about but it's like you know even so, me as a young kid i was I, like well oh my god that you just you see that person the, the designer you're like oh my god that's Givenchy, and it's like no that there's a whole history of designers whole, behind beautiful. the person that's taking over uh, the house my philosophy my 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 thinking behind him being removed from the red carpet is that in the age of cancel culture and and all of this, especially you know with with online and fashion, how everything moves so quickly, so quickly. by removing him from the red carpet because he could call out a rip off, you know, like a knockoff, he could uh, call all those things out very quickly, which yeah. creates could, cancel culture. Right. By removing him and having some uneducated YouTuber, um, you know, cover the red carpet, they're keeping everything very bubblegum. Right, but Super that's going to create another type of cancel culture where she says something more offensive to just, like, a celebrity on the carpet. You know, like, 
I don't, I think a person like him would know, you know, have the knowledge to not say a certain thing or not, you know, even, no, even that, if you're reading an old look, it's like, okay, you can read an old look, girl, but you can't like say the wrong pronoun. That's a, that's a more bigger thing for me. You know what I mean? That's very true too. You know, because are you, like, are you saying how, like how older people, like old generations can be so set in their ways? Well, yeah, but I assume like someone like Andre Leon Talley that's more like up on it. He knows what's he knows how the change the things are changing, and he knows like oh yeah, he keeps himself very like woke. Like, yeah, that's his job. That's, that's it. He's yeah, he's always moving with the times, and he's always always excited about newness. And I don't understand why they would cancel. Well, that you know, I'm we're gonna have to do some understand. research. We're gonna have to see who this. Uh, what's her name? Let me just pull her name really quick. Uh, I don't need it. Liz, Liza Kashi. <laughs> Liza Kashi. We're going to have to see who Liza Kashi is. I don't know. Maybe she's, maybe she's fucking really super fierce and who knows? No, that, there never are. There I never are. All right. these influencers are not interesting. But all they do is have followers and they, all they do is eat like avocado toast wearing fucking <laughs> eyelet. Hey, I, I love avocado toast. Have avocado toast. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like it was, oh my god, wait. Oh, oh, bitch, ladies, dress. ladies, ladies. I hear something. Uh, they can make you slap. You got, girl? It's time for sex talk. Are y'all ready? Oh. Okay. <laughs> they can make you slap somebody. All right. So, in this weird ass age that we're living in right oh, now. Oh, girl. Don't get me started. It's an age. So, you know, there's a group chat service called Zoom. Which yes. was yeah. originally I just created I just downloaded for the intention of facilitating group meetings and help students connect across the globe and to like study in groups and like it was uh, it all educational starts out innocent. Sir, what do you got? <laughs> it has become a virtual playground for club kids and now the sex industry. <laughs> I knew you were coming. I knew that was gonna happen. <laughs> I knew it. it. Girl, clutch them. So, you know, there are, they, okay, just in general, people should know that there are, like, events for, like, the sex, not just porn, but, like, people who want to interact within, like, a kink world or, like, meet other couples that are into, like, sex things and stuff like that. You know, yeah. there, there, there was an industry for that that has now been canceled, obviously, because people can't gather. So they've gone online. So this one company called NSFW, which is obviously not suitable for work, uh, had a couple's play date. So now they turned it to online. You know, it it was a private club before, and now they're offering it as like an online Zoom thing, which is like a sex and cannabis positive experience. Okay. And according to one viewer who was a part of this experience, they said... I'm going to put my mic close to me. I spent three hours in a video conferencing session with 45 strangers watching a man Whoa. in a sailor hat enthusiastically eating ass. In another corner, a bearded man in a tastefully minimalist studio apartment ties up a slim, dark-haired woman with shibari rope, her breasts bulging between the knots. In another, a brunette woman in a cream-colored bustier enthusiastically fillets her partner, who is wearing what appears to be Batman pajamas. That's adorable. (laughs) (laughs) Jamie's like, I am down, honey. Send me the Zoom code. I'm there. I'm like, that's so, I can just hear her being like, babe, say it again, say it again. And then he's like, I'm Batman. (laughs) (laughs) You would live for that shit. That's so Jamie. You're like, I'm Batman. And then you like laugh. And then like, he's like, ha ha, I love you. And then they pulls your hair and like, Oh my god, yes! I know what you want, honey. I know what you want. Zoom room. Girl. Well, London based club, the London based club Killing Kittens hosted an online orgy. And the trend has also made its way into the porn world where this director 
Alexandre Sarte produced a four-way lesbian orgy shot entirely over video conference Love it. titled Quarantine Lesbian Circle Jerk. How do we look this up? <laughs> I'm asking for a friend. I just gave you, I gave you all, I, I gave you all the ask. keywords. I gave you all the keywords. Wait, so what do we think about Wait, like, how do you get invited? How do we get invited? Oh, that's your, things? that's what you're worried about, Ava? <laughs> yeah, I just want to know what the invite. Jamie like, has no comment. Yeah, I'm more of a voyeur. <laughs> I'd be like totally a voyeur, voyeur be like, what are you, what are you guys doing? You right. know, like, I don't know. It sounds kind of fun. What are you guys doing? I mean, I, I mean, I mean, I think it sounds kind of exciting. I mean, this is all someone's, you know, their outlet for right now, quarantine sex. Fuck it, you know. I like it. It's safe. It is it's super, super safe. Super safe. Girl, yes. It's so safe. Mm-hmm. I feel like this may be the year of like yeah, less yeah. STDs. Statistics. <laughs> as long as, as, long as I'm, 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 it, so. and like putting it online as like revenge porn later, like as long as it's it's safe in that respect, I'm all for it. Right. Well, that's. Can a... I ask you a question? Can you get? Can you film your? Can you record your Zoom? Because like, is well, actually, there's always like, a chance that, that someone. Friends, so like, how... Let's say if someone, yeah. if I'm zooming with someone on my laptop, I could definitely take my phone and be like and record it you know like secretly bloop you know you never know you never know so like these things are that's not that's what I have a little bit of problem with because if I'm you like know, like hey that. you know doing whatever what if someone's filming it like I thought we were having you know this point this point 45 of, of oh, five people here I thought we had something you know <laughs> <laughs> There were 45 people here. I thought this was intimate. I thought we had something. (laughs) My headphones have fallen off. (laughs) That was a good one. Well, yeah. Well, Zoom, you know, so Zoom users have jumped now from 10 million to 200 million people are now using Zoom. From 10 million. Girl. Oh, that's an event. That's cute. That's very cute. Who owns Zoom? I would now. I wish I would have thought of that shit. I've never done it. I've never Zoomed. Girl, I just, I just downloaded it. Well, Jamie, what you should do is not go on Raya and find the owner of Zoom. <laughs> Girl, this yeah, is yeah. only my second Skype in my whole life. Oh my god, really? <laughs> and your like, first we made the Skype cut. was when I found out that I booked Sense Eight. Shush, really? That's cute. I, d- I had to download Skype on my computer because I didn't even have internet back then. And I had to go to my manager at my agent's office and she did it on her iPad. And, and I Skyped and they told me that I had booked Nomi on Sense8. But this is my second time Skyping in my whole life. Girl, you need to be on the up and up. Like, you should be on, you should be always getting Apple devices immediately sent to your house. You should be getting all the software sent to your email. A six pack phone. I need a new phone. <laughs> no, you Girl. don't. You need to keep all those. Phones. I literally got a letter from a, a phone company saying you can't use this phone anymore. I went before I got my Apple. <laughs> like, Ooh. stop using this phone. It's basically a pack. Yeah, they're like, we're not supporting this anymore. <laughs> that was rude. All right, and well, I, now. And then I got peer pressure to get an Apple. Girl, I mean, I well, I got so much shit because I got a Google Pixel phone. Like, I'm still getting, it's like, it's like, how do you, like, it's a bigger tree. It's a bigger tree. Honestly, Leave me alone no, with my Pixel phone. <laughs> yeah. No, it's basically if you don't wear a mask, that's what your life right now is. Right. Like, <laughs> where's your mask? <laughs> well, Jamie Clayton, the next time we're going to see you is on Roswell. Star, New Mexico, though. honey. Like, Star. she's still working, Mexico, honey. Yeah. Well, her work, her work is like time traveling. That's really Jamie's job. Jamie's job. She's a tra- time traveler. Like you know, this is. Nope, I told you not to tell anyone. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, the tea has spilled. Next, next week. Next, next week Monday, you have to tune in at nine p.m. on the CW, and you're gonna yeah. see motherfucking Jamie Clayton. So 
What, can we see your character's name? No, we can't. Um, well, yeah, so by the, the, the press release um, said my, my character is called Agent Grace Powell. Agent um, she's in the Grace F- FBI. Powell. She's in the FBI. What? Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm so, so excited. You get, you get a, you get a I, badge. I have the, so currently there, it's season two right now of, uh, of Roswell, New Mexico on the CW. I was um, offered the part um, from the showrunner, Karina Adley McKenzie. She's amazing. I had auditioned for the show originally, like for the for the reboot for season one, and I didn't get the part. But this is one of those moments that you hear like actors talk about that you that I never believed. Where like I went to the audition, I didn't book it, and then a year later they came back and offered me a different part. Right. And, I was like, girl, because they oh keep God. tabs. They're like, they keep your photo. They, it's like the, it's like the, uh, you know, when they're trying to find Absolutely. a serial killer, they have like a board, and they're like, this person a connects board. to this person, this person connects to this person, exactly. this person connects. To this. And they're like, oh my God, I'm don't forget about that bitch. Again. That bitch was there. She was there. She was there. She knows what it's like. That she bitch. was there. Yes. That bitch was there. Love. There's this phrase that I love. Um, it's called "win the room, not the audition." Which, you know me, you and I talk about that a lot. It's like, yes. don't you know. It's not about necessarily winning that that part, but it's win the room, win those people over. So I won the room, and a year later they came, and so they offered me this part last year. I was finishing up on the L word, and the offer came, and so I went out, and I'm gonna. I have three episodes in this season, season two. Oh. Um, I'm in episode eight, which is next Monday, and I then I'll Monday. Be oh my god. So 12 and then episode 13. So there's I'll be in eight, and then I'm not in nine, ten, or eleven, but then I come back in 12 and 13. Oh, she's back with a vengeance, honey. This is yeah. Fabulous. All right, y'all. So it's tune in oh, to... I'm, I'm so excited for you. This is great. I everyone the show, and I can't thank them enough. It was the best experience. Were there hot was- guys? Was there any hot guy you thought was cute? I mean... <laughs> Give us an initial. <laughs> Give us I love something, it. girl. Actually, you know, like, I'm like, um, I like the, I like cr- the crew type. So like, oh, there was like, like a me, yeah. guy, there was a hot guy in Crafty. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you're so mean, and they're like, I know, you know, I know, I know. we're at like the we're at like the most expensive black tie event, and they're like, you know what, we oh, always, we always we just want to fuck the waiter, or we just want to fuck the waiter. <laughs> Seriously, oh forever, fuck, forever fucking the help. Forever fucking always the help. Fuck the waiter. Wait, well, we're gonna check really quick. Right, any questions? Show. Any questions from the fans <laughs> watching live? Any questions? Oh, yeah. Comments live. before we hi, leave. Everyone. Jamie says hi. Where I'm gonna check the comments right quick. Your makeup looks so beautiful, girl. Thank you. It's the you know mm-hmm. Suzanne Barch. Um, she did a Nars palette, <gasps> and I love. love it's like a love. bit. I, I love the- that you. I love the corners. Love. Oh blue. my god, she's gonna love, love, love that. that Suzanne Barch I love loves that. you. I gotta do my eyebrows. I can't close. <laughs> you know, eyebrows are my thing. <laughs> girl, your eyebrows are. Ridiculous. They're so good. So good. I'm digging in. Oh my god. Virtual oh, sex is safe sex. Wait. I was like, I can't. I can't. I can't. I want to do medicine. But I'm doing my sessions. Wait. Uh, oh, someone, someone says to Jamie, I'm applying to college in the fall, and I thought I wanted to do medicine, but acting is my passion. Any advice? Should I say that again? Did you hear? Oh. Oh, If if it's your passion and you want to do it, do it, but don't, you cannot, um, you cannot have shame. So if you have, you have to be able to dig deep inside of yourself to use your life experiences to put into scenes. So if you have any shame, read Brene Brown, get a therapist, you know, talk about your shit. You cannot have shame. Shame will keep you from giving an authentic performance every single time. Oh, Oh my God. That's that's a good good one. one. Okay. I have another question. Jamie, whatever happened, that's a good question. Whatever happened to a series you wrote with the trans character? Wait, what is it? Did you write something? Did you write a series? Comments. Where are more comments? And some deep oh, we got lots of thank yous. 
lots of oh, things. Baby. All right. Well, yeah. ladies, this has been amazing. Amazing. Oh, my God. So let's do this awesome. again. But, like, we don't have to do it live. We could do it, like, personal. We'll have a little Please. pajama and, party. And before we go, I want to say, Nomi, um, thank you for the article that you wrote about how oh trans women have been prepared. I wanted to ask you, do you, do you, did you, do you feel a little more prepared for this? Do you know, I just think maybe it's, we can use those experiences. You mentioned it to me on the phone, like, bef- like before it came out. And it, it the, the second that you said the idea, like the threat of it, it, it resonated so deeply because yes, I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting to me in a way, because like, also I was, so broke for so long so like I've always been doing my own hair my own nails like my own facials you know like I wax my own leg like yeah funny because I'm like I'm none of the beauty stuff has affected me with with this I have never felt lonely ever in my life until now like I've I feel like I've set myself up in a way in my life that I've sort of like painted myself into a corner or like locked myself into a glass castle. I've never felt loneliness like I feel now, which oh is like God. very sad. Um, but I do, your article was so spot on. Um, I think I, I tweeted something like it was the whole truth and nothing but the truth because wow. yeah, I mean, I feel like as a woman of trans experience, like I have gotten just so I've spent so much time learning to love myself that being, you know, told to stay home and not to go out and not to talk to people. Like if I didn't, if I didn't like myself in the way that I do, this would suck beyond belief. And so I love my transness in this moment and I'm grateful for it. And I'm grateful for, for you. And I'm grateful for you, Ava. I'm grateful for the women in my life and for the, because this is fucking tough. And so everybody fucking stay home, wear a mask and thank you. Yes. Oh my God. Applause, applause. We love you, Jamie. Thank you for co hosting this episode. You look so beautiful. I'm so happy. You're always healthy and happy. Thank you. You're always welcome here, girl. Cheers. Everyone, put up your glasses. Mine's is empty. I'm tipsy. Mine's empty too, but I'll take, I think there's like like a drop. (laughs) All right, y'all. Everyone. Follow Allegedly online on YouTube. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Stalk us. Be our best friends. We love you. (laughs) (laughs) We'll be back Thursday night with an all new episode, 7 p.m. right here where you're watching Chow Long. Who's your your guest going to be? Oh my God, we don't know. (laughs) Amanda was amazing. Amanda was fucking phenomenal. Phenomenal.